the fact you can get both research and international culture experience is unbeatable. And on top of that, they fund you. And that's some, for me, a student who gets financial aid um, every year for school, it's an amazing opportunity. That opportunity to do collaborative research overseas related to cyber infrastructure has changed the lives of 50 UC San Diego participants in PRIME, the Pacific Rim Experiences for Undergraduates program. With primary funding from the National Science Foundation and further support from the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology, students fan out across the Pacific each summer to work at institutions in Japan, Taiwan, China, and Australia, all sites affiliated with the NSF-funded Pacific Rim Applications and Grid Middleware Assembly, or PRAGMA. The research itself is of, of interest to all three parties, typically. The student, because they're interested in, in learning something very specific, uh, and both the, the host mentor and the UCSD mentor on what the, the product of what the student uh, produces. My project specifically um, is all about protein, kind of protein docking, and use molecular simulations to search for and identify possible, uh, in, the, in the long run, inhibitors of a protein. This is the compound binding into a pocket in the neuraminidase protein. In China, Lily Chung used high-throughput virtual screening of compounds to find new candidates to replace current drugs on the market that treat avian influenza, bird flu, by targeting neuraminidase, responsible for the budding and spread of viruses after they've invaded the host. What we looked at was new neuraminidase inhibitors, so compounds that would potentially inhibit this protein and thus stall viral replication in the human body. Betsy Cao worked at Taiwan's National Center for High Performance Computing, where she helped develop a plug-in to make it easier to compare super high-resolution images on tile display walls. The neurons are really detailed, and then they can't, like, if you need to change your images every single time, then you couldn't really comp do side-by-side -side comparison. Betsy's work was to take these images off the stack and then line them up like on a light box, like on a digital light box, um, so that they're nicely aligned in a grid, and that wasn't possible before this project. Before leaving for Asia, Prime students spend four months working part-time with their UCSD mentors. In Cal's case, Jürgen Schultz at Cal IT2. Schultz also mentored Ava Pierce and David Jackson, who went to Japan and developed an easy-to-use browser to handle very large images, improving on the open-source software for manipulating 3D objects on tile displays. And we built a simple file browser that would um, load images on the tile display. We created a thumbnail bar where you could see what these images are instead of having to figure out like what does this file name really mean. And with our file browser now, all you have to do is drop your image into a directory. So you can see how it changes resolution as it gets bigger. You can see how it sort of conforms to how big, how, how much detail you want. My project uh, involved um, working with uh, cardiac modeling. Specifically, Amir Yazi worked to improve on an existing model of the heart. This model was the ionic interaction uh, inside the cardiac uh, myocyte, which is a cardiac, uh, cardiac cells, in uh, different layers of the muscle cells. And we basically added some other factors, metabolic factors, to this ionic model. In Australia, we use this um, program called Nimrod, which basically um, was a parameter suite type of tool where you were able to take a model and change lots of different parameters um, at lots of different values and just run that whole thing through the program. One of the original developers of Nimrod, Monash University professor David Abramson, hosted four prime students in 2007. So these kids come out and, you know, they haven't just gone through a university degree in one country, they've gone somewhere else culturally, met, you know, other, other cultures and, and worked in other projects. So. We'll do anything we can to make it continue. Having access to cyber infrastructure and grid computing resources was critical to most students' research. I remember one time in Australia I ran over, over 100,000 jobs to be able to narrow it down to some, some range of values. I've used nodes in Japan and Australia and um, here at UCSD actually. So that was able um, to make our project run a lot faster and more efficiently and so we could get results a lot quicker. With Osaka's biggest, world's biggest micro electron microscope, I was able to take the images, tomogram images, and 
um, create the three-dimensional models here. Right now, this is an initial uh, stage, and so I was only able to um, segment mitochondria from the cell, but we're hoping it's looking very, very good, and we're hoping to further pursue the project. Using the grid resources in Osaka, Japan, I could actually screen through um, over a million compounds just in like a week. We've been able to run our jobs on the grid, so it's really a collaboration of all the sites coming together to help us complete this project. Eighteen months after getting back from China, Chung just submitted her second paper for publication. The first appeared in the Journal of the American Chemical Society, and she's not the only prime student author. So this is actually a figure from the uh, paper that's just been submitted. There are other academic benefits as well. I have just recently applied to graduate school for electrical engineering, so um, definitely the prime, pro prime program was one of the major factors in my decision. Prime's actually a really good teaching experience because I learned so much about computer programming and how to apply that to um, biology. The research aspect of it really started to spark with me for, for Prime because it was my chance to really see if that was right for me or not. So is it? From what I've seen so far, definitely. Mm -hmm.